During the recent controversy over the vaccination and pregnancy, stories like this have become very prominently pushed. So pregnant women who had the COVID jab were 15% less likely to suffer a stillbirth, etc. The problem is that a lot of the studies that make such claims are fundamentally flawed. And this is because of a problem that we call survivor bias. As a very good analogy, imagine a marathon race of 40 kilometers, that's 26 miles. So it's claimed that a special vitamin drink increases the chances the runners will complete the race. And to test this, there's a drink station at the halfway stage, i.e. 20 kilometers. And the runners have the choice to take the drink or not at that point. Now for simplicity, I'll assume that there are just 20 starting runners. And what we're interested in is whether taking the drink improves the chances of a runner completing the race. So they're going along on the race. And what happens is that every so often a runner falls out of the race. So here at the 20 kilometer point where the drink station is, four of the 20 runners have dropped out. Now we're going to mark in red those runners who take the drink. So what we've got here is that 10 of the surviving runners take the drink and six don't. So on they go. And you can see that again, more runners drop out. So in total, we've now got seven of the 10 who took the drink complete the race, that's 70%. But only five of the 10 who didn't take the drink complete the race, that's 50%. So this suggests a higher completion rate for those who took the drink. But of course, this is a statistical illusion created by the fact that four of the 10 who didn't take the drink never got to the drink station. In fact, five of the six who did get there and didn't take the drink completed the race. That's 83%, which is a higher completion rate than those who took the drink. So here's that same information in a table, starting with the aggregate data only. So you can see here the higher completion rate for those who took the drink. But when we add the details of the dropouts, we see a higher completion rate in those who didn't take the drink given the opportunity to do so. Now using exactly the same numbers, let's replace the starting marathon runners with newly pregnant women. Runners who complete the race with those who delivered a healthy baby. And the vitamin drink at 20 kilometers with a vaccine at 20 weeks into the pregnancy. All the women reaching 20 weeks pregnancy must by definition have avoided early miscarriages which is when most pregnancy failures occur. And so the aggregate results would suggest that vaccinated women are more likely to deliver a healthy baby than unvaccinated women. But again, the detailed result is that those pregnant women who get the option of vaccination, it's the unvaccinated who are more likely to deliver a healthy baby. Now, of course, this is all hypothetical and oversimplified because pregnant women might get the option of vaccination at many different stages, both before and during pregnancy. And we have to take such information into account in order to arrive at a suitable risk assessment. But it turns out that this survivor bias problem is still highly relevant to the real world studies and data. And further details can be found here.